gonna be a competitive draft, so there will be sideboarding this time around. Well, let's get started. Got a pretty good pack here. Some quality uncommons, Wizard Shining, Firefist Adapt, Garna are all quality uncommons. There's also Sheevan Fire as the common that stands out. I think Sheevan Fire better than Fish's Offering, although they're both very good. And then there's also Steel Leaf Champion, but I think all these triple color cards are kind of a trap. Even if you first pick them, there's a high chance you don't end up playing them. It's kind of like picking a, a multicolor card first pick, but it might be even narrower since they're not really splashable. So I'm actually not a fan of first picking Steel Leaf Champion. Um, I think I prefer the Wizard's Lining here, just a solid removal spell. And if we do end up in the Blue-Red Wizard deck, even better. If not, then 3 damage for 3 mana and some speed is still a fine card. And in red, you usually end up with enough Wizards to make it worthwhile. So I think we'll go Lightning over Sheevan Fire. And then uh, go from there. Hope to maybe wheel, let's say, the Lava Runner, the Fury. We're not going to wheel Sheevan Fire. There's a chance we will adapt if no one's Wizards. So pretty stacked back. And what do we have here? This one's quite a bit weaker than our previous pack. The uncommons are all kind of medium. Wizard's Retort is okay in the wizard deck, but it's pretty narrow. And between the uncommons, the, the ones that stand out to me are the Unicorn, the Skin Witch, and the Skittering Surveyor. Surveyor, definitely nice value play keeps your options open, can be a multicolor deck, splashing for fixing. So kind of leaning towards the Surveyor here. Uh, could also end up in a reasonable aggro deck if we, for example, take a Mesa Unicorn here. Or if we try to force Wizards, we could pick a Wizards Retort here. But I think I like keeping my options open and I'll take Surveyor, which can end up in pretty much any deck. But again, this is kind of preference based. Some people will pick a uh, Wizards Retort, Force Wizards. Some people will f force Lava Runner, Force Mono Red. Some people will like the Unicorn, try and go Red White aggro. Some people will take Skin Witch and try and build a Red Black kind of grindy value deck. All those options are defensible. And that's why Dominaria is a, a more interesting set to draft compared to Rivals. Alright, well, there's a Journey Mage, which is a sign that the Wizards might be somewhat open. Uh, what other good cards are there? Not that many. Like Acolyte's fine, but I would rather have a Journey Mage, I think. Spider's okay, but no real reason to jump into green for it. Phoenix is fine, but unexciting. So I think I'm okay picking the Journey Mage here and see if maybe Wizards is open. And here, what's the best card? There's a Fungal Plot, so we're seeing quite a few green cards here all of a sudden. There's a Fungal Plot, which can be quite strong. There's Migration for the token deck, can be very good too. There's another Unicorn. For the Wizard deck, there's not that much. We're not super interested in uh, fourth picking a Tolerant Scholar, usually get those late. Same with Opt. So I don't think we're taking one of the blue cards here. So between the cards I've mentioned, so Migration, Plots or Unicorn, which one goes better with the things we already have and can potentially lead to a decent deck? So if we take Migration, we could end up in, let's say, a Red-Green Kicker deck, dump the Journey Major, maybe splash it off blue. Uh, that could be okay. We could, let's see, how good is Unicorn? Unicorn, not the most synergistic pick with what we have. Could end up in, let's say, a blue-white deck splashing red for Wizard's Lining. And then Unicorn's just a fine two-drop, that's fine. Um, Red-white splashing blue seems less likely. And Fungal Plots... Not the best card with what we've got going on necessarily. So I'm leaning towards the Sapling Migration here. 
And what do we have here? The green cards are kind of medium. We've got a Sorcerer's Wand, which can be an okay finisher in a wizard deck. And then, yeah, all the cards are pretty weak here. Could just take a Cyclops as an okay blocker. Could take Explorer or Game Flight if you're into that. It's probably either like a Cyclops, just as an okay blocker in, let's say, a red-green or blue-red deck. And we're still not married to any one of our colors, although we would like to play the Wizard's Lining. Could take the Envoy, which is not a super interesting 3-drop, but a 3-drop nonetheless. You do want to have a curve and uh, can help us fix our mana in a pinch. But that would be more likely in like a blue-green splash red deck, I guess. I think I'm more interested in the Cyclops thing that has a higher upside than the Envoy. And well, now we're seeing a very late Blessed Light, so that's a sign White's open. So these packs have been a, b a little bit all over the place, not entirely clear which colors we should be. But I'm not going to pass up on the Blessed Light here. Now we're seeing some more green in Mammoth Spider. Some okay but unexciting red cards. So yeah, still not entirely sure what direction we're headed. So what happens if we take Spider? Could be red, green, splash, white. If we take Fire Elemental, we solidify the red a little bit, but not the most exciting 5-drop. A Lava Runner doesn't strike me as great if, unless we just end up straight up blue-red wizards. But we only really have the Journey Mage and the Lightning to support that plan. We did see that one pack with Sampling Migration and a bunch of green cards, so I think I'm hedging towards green more than red right now. Well, there's a Tiana, so maybe we just need to be red-white. Don't think we're gonna miss a Fire Elemental, so I'm okay with it that we picked the Spider last pack. So now we might just want to pick Tiana, move into red-white. Don't think we'll miss the second Cyclops necessarily, and the Honor Guard is replaceable. The other option would be just taking a Worm and move into green pretty heavily. But I think Tiana's okay here. Alright, and we wield the Sergeant at Arms. Seems like the pick here if we want to move into red-white, potentially. And we wouldn't be missing out on much either way. And now I'll take an Adamant Will as an okay trick in case we end up in a slightly more aggressive deck. So in hindsight, had we taken some of those Mesa Unicorns, we would have been happier. I think those are the only picks I really regret now. But it was difficult to navigate, to say the least. So now we can go for a Fury or a Knight. I think we just want to have the 2-drop here. I think I'll still take the Scholar since I am not a fan of Frenzied Rage. There's still a chance we end up blue. Alright, so the first pack definitely a little bit all over the place. Right now the most realistic plan is just straight up red-white. Which would leave us with these cards. And that's not a uh, not a bad start, all things considered. Picked up a nice multicolor uncommon, Blessed Light as removal, Wizard's Lining as removal. And a semblance of a curve. So all we really missed out on, had we been red-white from the start, is I think one or two Mesa Unicorns. And that's a Sarah Angel. Alright. That's gonna be my pick. Moldrotha. Powerful card, fun card. But uh, I don't think that's realistic at this point. When there's a Sarah Angel, that's a perfectly fine card. Hoping to wheel Unicorn, Cavalry. Maybe a Short Sword, we'll see. Last time we drafted Red White, we wished we had more equipment. So I want to make sure to pick up at least one. Well, this pack is pretty stacked too. Got a Goblin Barrage, Skizik, another Tiana, Radiating Lightning, although we're 
mostly looking at the top row here. So I don't think we need to take another Tiana after having 3-5 drops already, plus there's a chance she wheels if we're the only red-white drafters she wheeled in the previous pack after all. So the same reasoning applies there, and then Goblin Barrage is just a fine removal spell at 4 mana, always interested in more removal. And we even have a Scaring Surveyor that we can throw at the opponent's face for 4 damage. Other good cards left in the pack, Blink of an Eye, Grow from the Ashes, Deep Freeze. So blue and green also potentially open, but I think we're settling nicely into red-white here. And what do we have now? Well, a bunch of good blue cards. Divination, Time of Ice, those are quality blue cards. So we still maybe looking at splashing blue, which is before Journey Mage so far, which is without enough wizards, another 5 drop, so not looking good for our curve. And I don't think we want to hop back over into green, since we would be missing out on quite a few good red cards. Charge, Fervent Strikes are just two mediocre pump spells. I guess the Fervent Strike makes more sense. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing having to pick one of these. I guess we can also just take a Champion of the Flame in case we end up with some equipment. I don't like auras, but if we can find some equipment, I might play it. Don't think we'll miss a Fervent Strike or a Charge, so it seems like uh, we might as well take it here. All right, well, there's an Adamant Will as a reasonable trick. Could take a random 2-drop in Keldon Warcaller or another Cyclops. Um, I think I might actually go for the Cyclops here. Fills out our curve a little bit better. And a 2-drop is very replaceable. So we'll Cyclops it up. All right, so Fall of the Thran, not a very good. Uh, there's a dub if we want to beat that deck. There's a run amok as well as a trick. Invoke the Divine, we are playing sideboard of the games this time around, so the value of Invoke does go up. So I don't hate picking an Invoke here over dub and run amok. We do have a little bit of synergy with dub, with Champion of the Flame and Tiana even, so maybe we actually do want a dub here instead. I think I'll give it a shot. And then hope to pick up some disenchants later. Uh, this pack, we could take a Howling Golem. But we already have a bunch of threes. I think we're more interested in just a filler two drop here. And the Honor Guard seems better to me than the War Caller. And not too interested in the Sarah Disciple. Sarah Disciple can be good if we are a very aggressive deck with a bunch of equipment, since having the flying body with first strike is nice. But generally speaking, I think we prefer a 2 mana 2 2 with upside over a 1 mana 1 1 first strike flying that will maybe get plus 1 plus 1 once a game. Alright, well, have another Warlord's Fury charge pack. Still don't think we're into Frenzied Rage, even though. We do have a Champion of the Flame. I think I might just want another Warlord's Fury. Makes cards like Knight of New Benalia a lot better if we have a few of those. And it cycles, so it draws us into our better cards. Could even consider Shield here. Usually not a fan of this card, but this might be a deck for it. Other option is a Pardic Wanderer, which is a pretty replaceable 6-drop. I think I'll give Shield a try in case we don't end up with enough equipment otherwise. We're definitely still seeing a lot of good cards here. Deep Freeze, Going Late, Skin Witch, Dark Bargain. Alright, well, could have a Lava Runner now. Although we're more into equipments and auras than we are in Instants and Sorceries. But... We might also like uh, Radiating Lightning for a sideboard in case we're up against the One Toughness deck. I think that's probably more relevant than uh, a Lava Runner here, since we're playing sideboarded games. Alright, well, we just picked a uh, Lightning, so we might as well pick a Wanderer now. 
don't have either of these. So I guess I'll take a Fervent Strike. But hoping not to have to play it. Alright, so the second pack, not as exciting as the first one. We did take uh, Sarah Angel pack one, which was nice, and a Goblin Barrage second pick. But it dried up pretty quickly afterwards. So hoping the third pack delivers. We also didn't wheel Tiana for the record. And that's a good black rare. Warchief's pretty bad. Unicorn looks like the best option so far. Over Candle, over Overseer. And more good black cards. Wow, a lot of good green cards too. Alfame Druid, Kavu. But yeah, I don't know if we should have been green in this draft. There's a chance we should have been like green white, but it's difficult to say in hindsight. I think we'll be happy with uh, Kelner Raider here. We're relatively happy. We're sad that we're passing all these good green cards, but. Not much we can do at this point. All right, there's a Sheevan Fire at least. Happy to see that one. Third pick. Hoping to wheel a Sergeant is my guess. Do we want a Sergeant or a Trapper here? Don't have a ton of historic cards. We've got two artifacts and a Tiana as a legendary. And I guess I wonder if we end up playing it as another artifact. I think I prefer Sergeant. Yeah, this uh, draft was definitely tricky to navigate. I think the main problem that we may have ended up in red as opposed to green is that uh, Goblin Barrage. Since after picking Sarah Angel, which I think was a clear pick, there was a pack with all those red cards, including Goblin Barrage, Skizik, what else was there? Another 5-drop, I believe. And then the other good cards in the pack, I think, were like a, a Deep Freeze in blue. There were some good blue cards I remember in that pack. But I don't think there were any great green cards in our pack to pick two. So that kind of pointed towards red as opposed to green. And once we picked Goblin Barrage, I think it's too difficult to move out of red after you have a Wizard's Lining, Goblin Barrage, Tiana. So I don't think we can really blame ourselves for ending up in red-white. But it's definitely possible that another color could have worked out better. All right, so back to this pack. Not super exciting. So if we're taking a two-drop, we're taking the goblin. Bit of synergy with our goblin barrage. And we do have a few kicker cards with the sergeant. I'm not a fan of sparring constructs. And I don't think Lava Runner is going to be very good in our deck. Sarah Disciple is another 2-drop, or we could take an Urza's Tome. Not sure if we would start it, but it would be an okay sideboard card at the very least for the more grindy games. I think I prefer picking the Tome here. Could have picked up the Time of Ice and Splash Blue. I think at that point we had just picked the Goblin Barrage. So our deck was like Lightning, Goblin Barrage... Sarah Angel, Blessed Light, Tiana, and our only fixing is Skittering Surveyor. And our only blue card at that point was a, uh, and still is, a Journey Mage. Feels like it was a difficult spot to move into blue. Blue could have also worked out, but again, I think the only color we shouldn't have been is probably black. But then we also saw some good black cards in this last pack, so now we can either go for Keldon Overseer, another Tiana. Let's take a look at our curve. We could definitely use another 5-drop, so... I think Tiana's a fine pick here over the less exciting options. And probably not playing any of these. Have enough tricks where we don't need to play a bad one like Healing Grace. There's a chance we want an extra Lava Runner for more early plays, I guess. We wield Candle and Warchief. Uh, not too high on Warchief, just a 3 mana 2-2 two, two haste. I think we'll 
get a candle here. Don't think we're playing a Flame of Keld, but we have it just in case. So we did not wield those sergeants. Alright, so our deck somewhat medium. Also didn't see any equipment besides that one short sword in an early pack. So the Shield of the Realm is our only equipment currently. So I don't love the look of this deck, but I mean we can win some games on just Sarah Angel and maybe some early curve outs. But yeah, definitely not a very exciting deck. Let's uh, have a look at our curve. How good is Champion of the Flame? We have a shield and a dub, and that's it. Don't think we want it. But we might play the shield anyway, just to make sure our creatures don't become obsolete. So how many more cuts? One more. 17 lands seems fine. I think we're playing the Wanderer. Um, could always cut a Warlord's Fury. Our only real synergy is a Knight of New Banalia, I suppose. Yeah, I think we'll cut a Fury here. Alright. So, mana base 8-9. Is that right? It's definitely close. We do need double red for Kelden Raider. Most of our two drop creatures are white, though. I think I'll actually favor white. It might be okay to not play Kelden Raider on turn 4, but if we can't play these two drops reliably, that's going to be worse for us, I think. Alright, so... Red, white, aggro-ish. And I guess we'll change our picture to Tiana. This sounds not exciting, but probably keepable. Got lands and spells, so. And we do have a little bit of removal, at least in our deck. Sheevan Fire, Candle, Barrage, Blessed Light. So we've got a balanced deck, just not a, an exciting one. Alright, so it could be up against the wizard deck. Yeah, our only bomb really is Sarah Angel. I think Sarah Angel still qualifies as a bomb 25 years later. So if they kill the sergeant here, we're going to be spinning our wheels for a while. Alright, so... Well, there's our star angel, so if we can find our white mana, we might be okay. So, I need to top deck planes and have our opponents not answer Sarah Angel pretty much. If they have a bunch of bounce spells, then we're in trouble. Divination's not bad. Although luckily no extra wizards in play. Alright, perfect. So let's attack and play an angel, I think. Could also Blessed Light. Could get wrecked by Syncopate for one, but I think we just have to play our cards here. Alright, so our opponent's got a million cards in hand. They're likely to have an answer for Sarah Angel or at least a combat trick. We'll see. And if we get to untap with an Adamant Will, then 
things look quite a bit better. All right, just a Sphinx. So far, so good. And Sarah Angel with a shield on it is going to be difficult for them to deal with unless they find a, a bounce spell for it or the uh, blue enchantment making it into a, a, an 04 wall. I think this is equip shield. Attack with Angel. Ooh, I don't think her opponent knows what shield does if they're triple blocking. Uh-oh. Yeah, this is going to be bad for her opponent. Since the shield prevents two damage from each source, so right now her opponent's only dealing one damage to her Sarah Angel. So we don't even have to use our Adamant Will. Alright, well... Reading the card will usually explain the card. Probably should have uh, tapped our mana differently here, so we would have red and white up. That's okay. Well, that's the advantage of playing a card that's not played very often, is that opponents won't know what it does. Not Adelis. And another Drake. Alright, well, <laughs> we're back to where we started. Is the opponent gonna triple block again? I don't think so. Ooh, dub. Do we want to go all in here? I think that's pretty greedy. We might as well just dub the sergeant. Don't want to put ourselves that to a bounce spell on the Sarah Angel here. Opponent takes it. And I think we're just passing. Alright, so hope to dodge a bounce spell. Opponent's got 7 mana, so that's quite a bit. But we are presenting a lethal next turn, so we might force the opponent into an awkward spot. We can beat damage base removal with the Adamant Will pretty easily. So it's mainly... Something like a Blink of an Eye, or a Journey Mage, that would be bad. Time of Ice would also be quite bad for us. And the Deep Freeze, I guess. So mostly the blue cards. Alright, no attacks, no plays. Let's get in there. Don't think we attack with the Surveyor yet. Even though we might be able to. Naru, sure. Still have a Blessed Light and an Adamant Will at the ready. As well as a Candle. So this also doesn't really work out since we kill the Sphinx. And... Uh, this does have first strike, so no reason to do anything. And I think we just pass a turn. So pretty weird double block there. Bone's got one card left. Better be a good one. Firefist Adapt. Alright, so I think we have a response, or do we? I don't think we actually do, since it doesn't kill anything. And one damage on Sarah Angel doesn't make a difference. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Alright. Um. So I saw a whole bunch of flyers. Not a ton of interaction. Uh, I don't think this is very good. We might want an extra 2-drop just to be more low to the ground. 
Cyclops is decent at erasing flyers, since they need to leave back multiple blockers for it. And uh, 4 power for 4 mana is a pretty good rate for erasing. I think I like most of our stuff. Could be that we can cut a Pardic Wanderer and make room for a Keldon Warcaller, for example. Have a, an extra 2 drop. Shield seems o seemed okay in that game. Also works nicely with our two Tianas as far as flyers with equipment are concerned, since that way we can block the Sphinx as well. Still don't think we want champions since we just don't have, have enough enablers with only a shield and a dub. Just happened to draw both of them there. I think we'll just try this. Small change. Could be that we should have now added an extra mountain over a plane since we added a red 2 drop. But uh, having double white for Star Angel is pretty important. And I don't think we can keep a one lander, sadly. Alright, well. I think we keep a Cyclops on top. Although it's close, since we just need any 4th land to cast it, and we don't have a 4 mana play currently. Yeah, I think we keep it. Could get punished if we never see a 4th land, especially if we don't find white mana in time. But I don't think we can reliably find double white mana by turn 5, so we might as well just have a solid turn 4 play in the meantime. Alright, so this is a card we boarded in. So far, it seems better than our Pardic Wanderer. Alright, she even fires a good pickup. Don't think we have two cassettes right now. If her opponent plays an Adelis, for example then uh, we probably want to kill that instead. But if they attack, then I might pull the trigger. Ooh, it's gonna be a Naban. So what Enter the Battlefield triggers did we see? We saw the Fire Fist Adapt and that's it. I don't think Naban's a high priority target here. I think I would rather just kill the Academy Drake. Should have killed the Drake before it attacked in case of run amok, giving an attacking creature plus three and uh, trample there, so probably should have done that in the beginning of combat phase. Yeah, Naru also has a Enter a battlefield ability, I suppose. But it would also need a cheap instant to go alongside it, so. Alright, that's a good one. It's four damage to the face. And shield the draw. Want to keep the Cyclops back to block. Could play the shield. I think there's a good chance we're going to need our Blessed Light here. They might play a Sphinx, they might play Adelis. Well, right now we're just taking one from the Assistants, so we're technically stable if we can drop the Sarah Angel. But if the Cyclops disappears, we're taking quite a big hit. And the Sheevan Fire unkicked. I see, they have a, a Naru. So do we Blessed Light Naban so they don't kill... I know, I guess we don't have to since they're just gonna copy the Sheevan Fire, kill Cyclops. 
and then we can Blessed Light Naru instead. Take six. It's gonna hurt, but... So yeah, the alternative would have been to kill Naban, but then we still lose a Cyclops, and then we would take four this turn, and they would have a Naru in play. I guess we would have still had a uh, a War Caller instead. So not entirely clear if killing Naban or um, exiling a Naru was better in that spot. Either way, playing a Cyclops here, hoping to find white mana in time. And hoping our opponent draws a few lands in the meantime. Quite a few cards that kill us on the spot here. They could have the plus one trick, in which case blocking the ban might be better. If it's a Fire Fist Adept, they would have played it pre-combat. I think we just want to minimize the damage here. Alright, no tricks so far. And second main. Just a war caller. Alright, I mean, unicorn's actually not bad here. Combined with a shield, it can definitely do some work. Could technically attack, because unicorn blocks. A uh, two power guy, we take three, we gain two. Yeah, I mean, do want to try and close out the game somewhat quickly here. And then uh, next turn we can maybe leave back Cyclops and attack with Unicorn, depending. I'm sending. Alright, just a land. And we can outrace the assistant with our unicorn. I would have loved to draw a planes here. So now we can't attack with both. We can only attack with the unicorn or the cyclops. Could still attack with the cyclops, but then they can also just double block it. Of course, we would move the shield first, I suppose. So do we want to put them to six or do we just want to gain two? I think we would rather gain two. And since it's only one mana to move the shield, I think we might as well put it on the Cyclops here. And I'll play out my land, so if we do draw planes, we can place our angel and still move around the shield. Alright, opponent finds a land, that's good. So we take one down to three. And Adamant Will could be a big draw. So what happens now if we attack with both? If they don't block, they're dead. So I I guess that works. And if they double block Cy Cyclops... Hmm. Guess I didn't consider that. Then... We can just use our Adamant Will, kill both two drops, I suppose. I guess that's okay. And we keep the shield on Unicorn, I think we do. Alright, so we're at 5. And our opponent keeps flooding out here. And yeah, they have to stay back with the assistant now. Oof, <laughs> turn it around. And the Goblin Barrage is going to end the game in style. Goblin Barrage with Kicker. So 
sweet. Well, this game looked bad for a second, but our opponent drew like three lands in a row at least. And uh, we came back. Alright, sweet. So we're 1-0. Let's keep going. If we can get three wins with this deck, I'll be happy. And the sand seems pretty decent. I think we'll hold on to the Fury. Since we don't have a turn 3 play lined up this turn anyway, or in the sands anyway. And the first rank could be useful to get past a blocker. Had we drawn a 3-drop, then cycling the Fury makes more sense. Put it on perhaps a mono-white deck. Or just a greedy mana base, we'll see. Alright, we're drawing lands, that's good. Uh, so yeah, just attack, play Sergeant. I think Wizards released some uh, data on the Dominaria draft format on Magic Online after it was out for a while. And I think one of the data points was that decks with Mesa Unicorn won a surprising amount of games. Don't know exactly what the entire context of that uh, stat was, but it essentially boiled down that Mesa Unicorn, good card. At least in this format. Alright, so... Baird is gonna be a bit of a party pooper here. So do we play a Kelden Raider? What do we discard if we do? Do we just play a Cyclops? My guess is we just wanna... Play a Cyclops. And then next turn we can potentially Fury and then pay for Baird to attack. Since we don't exactly know what to discard yet, we would like to draw more lands, I suppose, but... If they don't present a second creature, then the Cyclops can potentially attack into Baird. Acolytes. Ooh, that's a good one. Potentially. Baird does make things awkward, since it makes it more difficult to conceal a combat trick. I think we're cycling this no matter what. Alright, pick up a land, that's good. So now we could attack with Cyclops and Unicorn. Opponent's going to be tempted to block. And then we have the Adamant Will. Seems fine. Yeah, the Acolyte is a cat warrior if you take a look at the, the rider. It's a cat. Also fooled me the first time I heard the cat noise. Ooh, Sarah Angel. Good thing we have a Blessed Light. And the uh, Unicorn is going to make it difficult for Repoint to race us here. Could have, I guess, held on to the land to discard to the Kelden Raider. Yeah, that was probably better. Wasn't really thinking too much there. But I guess now if we draw a land, we can discard it anyway. Alright, Triumph of Gerard. Might have to stay back with the Acolyte now. Nope, they're dubbing it up. I mean, I guess they can still leave it back. Alright, so now we can just discard planes to Kelden Raider. Uh, 
and more Tianas. Sadly can't get two of them in play at the same time. And block the Acolyte. So no attacks. So we're hoping to find an answer to this Acolyte, obviously. But I don't think we have money. Since Goblin Barrage, for example, no longer does it. And that uh, big lifelink hit from Triumph is gonna equal out our life totals. Alright, so we can't quite go Surveyor into Tiana, so my guess is we just play Tiana. And just have to say go then. Alright, opponent's got one card left, the sword could also be somewhat tricky. But we've got definitely some draws here that can uh, lead to good things. Ooh, double dub. Alright, I imagine the Acolyte's attacking for the lifelink hit. We'll see if the Wanderer attacks too. Since we would take 15 down to 10, they would go back up to 16, but they would risk taking 15 at least, so they play it safe. Just attack with Acolytes, we'll take it. And just a plane's a draw. Alright, so I guess we're just attacking with Tiana then, but trading 3 damage for 7 damage, not the best. I was attacking with everyone looking like our opponent blocks Cyclops or Kelden Raider. And then takes 11, I guess it's worth it. And we're not at risk of dying on the way back. Yeah, I think we just have to push damage here. And then for now we'll play the Surveyor. And hope they don't draw a pump spell, I suppose. But it would have to be a pretty good one. Alright, so if they don't have anything, they should be dead next turn. No matter what. Well, that's definitely something. Kind of forgot about Skin Witch. It's been a while since I've played Dominaria Draft now. Oh, well, that's a good top deck. So yeah, I should, definitely should have kept a land in hand there to play around Skin Witch. Um, but it didn't end up mattering, I don't think. Since now we can Sheevan Fire with Kicker on Skin Witch, attack with everyone, block, block, take 5. Alright. And it's actually valuable that we got to see the Skin Witch, since now we can play around it better in future games. So, got saved by our top deck there. Yeah, 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. And yeah, the turn to Unicorn did a ton of work that game. So against the black-white dub... How do we sideboard? Lightning doesn't really do much. I don't think we want Ursa's Tome necessarily. Could go lower to the ground with Kelden Warcaller. They did also have Baird. So it's not necessarily the case that going lower to the ground is going to help. I think we just need some timely removal spells and just hope to draw better. Our decks looked pretty similar. As far as game plan, I think we just try again and just hope to draw well or kill their creature in response to the dub or afterwards. If we had a disenchant, I would definitely consider it for this matchup. 
killing a dub after they block, for example. Well, this is not gonna do it. This one seems a lot better. Hoping to draw a red source so we can play the Kelden Raider. Knight plus Fury. Decent combo. Can get a clean attack in. Yeah, it also kills Spartic Wanderer, so that's another upside of a disenchant potentially here. Don't need another planes. If we want to draw land, it's going to be a mountain. Opponent also mulliganed, luckily. Yeah, I usually just stick to the Ajani avatar. No particular reason other than Ajani is pretty cool. Well, it's too bad that we're playing a white card into a Knight of Malice here, but opponent was black-white themselves, so sooner or later they were going to play one themselves. Surveyor's a good one. So next turn we have to decide between Fury or Sergeant Unkicked. Alright, so right now, let's say we do play the sergeant, so what's our plan? We would take three from the knight again, or we could, so let's see, we could technically double block the knight of malice, I suppose. And if they first strike kill sergeant, the knight still kills their knight, and if they first strike kill our knight, then our sergeant finishes off the knight. So I guess playing Sergeant, staying back is actually not terrible. If they slap a dub on their Knight of Malice, I guess we could be in trouble, but... Yeah. Yeah, the best answer we have to the Knight is Sheevan Fire before it gets enchanted. And Goblin Barrage afterwards. We didn't see any instant speed removal from the opponent last game, didn't see any instant speed tricks. So I think I'm just double blocking here since this knight is going to be such a pain if we can't get rid of it. Alright, that worked out. I think we're just discarding a land here. And then next turn we can attack with a Warlord's Fury. Alright, Tiana's not bad. So got some options for next turn. And Dark Bargain end of turn. It's gonna help them find more action. But Scaring Surveyor, not the best target for a dub. Opponent's missing double white mana currently for Sarah Angel and Baird. So could see Sarah Angel or Baird. There's Baird. And I think just playing a Tiana here beats doing anything else. Want to keep the barrage for Sarah Angel, I think. The other option would be Warlord's Fury, and then pay to be able to attack with a Calorator. I think that's pretty weak. All right. And there's a Sarah Angel, so that's going to get killed. Or we could play our own Sarah Angel first. Nah, I think we want to kill it now that our opponent's tapped out for the most part. And then we can still play one to attack with Tiana. Skin Witch Kicked would hurt, but Skin Witch Kicked is going to hurt no matter what. Since either we lose Sarah Angel or... Or opponent, or uh, we lose the Goblin Barrage and our opponent gets to keep theirs, and I would rather answer the Sarah Angel, have the only flyer, as opposed to both have a Sarah Angel. So I think that makes sense. And then we'll keep the Warlord's Fury in hand so we can attack for one. Alright, 
figured it out. Suppose we could have also attacked with a Kelden Raider. And if we're to put on double blocks, we get to kill Baird. Don't know if that's the trade we want to make when we have a Warlord's Fury in hand. So kick Skin Witch would be bad news. Instead, a Feral Abomination. That's manageable. And a Shield. Could be pretty decent too here. Alright, so if we want to attack with Tiana, we can't play Sarah Angel. So I think we're just playing Sarah Angel before Skin Witch happens. And then we can double block Abomination on the ground. Tiana only works out of the battlefield and not out of our hands. So if they were to make us discard the shield, we don't get it back. So happy with a trade here. See if they have anything. All right, that works. So right now we've got, I think, the better board state going. So we can attack with both. Opponent would take seven. Could also play the shield first on the Sarah Angel. In case of some shenanigans. So play shield, equip and pay. Keep the Warlord's Fury for next turn. I can buy that. Suppose we could still cast the War Warlord's Fury here. And then still equip and pay. Is there a reason to give first rank this turn specifically? Not really, it would just be to cycle the Fury so we can maybe have a better turn next turn, potentially. Yeah, seems fine. And that's not a bad draw. All right, let's get in there. And then next turn we have to decide if we want to keep attacking or maybe play Kicked Sergeant. It looks like they have a Huh, weird. Do they have like an Urza's Ruinous Blast or something? Or did they forget Tiana's first strike? Who knows? We even cast the Warlord's Fury, so they definitely knew we had first strike. Alright, feels to me like we just want to play Surveyor and then attack with our Flyers. And then next turn we can potentially just attack with Sarah Angel and then still play a Kicked Sergeant to hold the ground. And no need to move the equipment. All right, so we're threatening lethal next turn. Opponent needs removal, life gain, or they need to deal 17 damage, or a flying blocker. So let's take seven. And it's gonna be Cabal Evangel. Alright, it's gonna do it. GG's. Alright. So this game went pretty well. Most valuable card. Probably Sarah Angel, all things considered. Although Goblin Barrage was pretty important too. And a Plague Belcher. Alright, so we're 2-0 in competitive. 
one more win to get the three wins we were hoping for. This sounds very awkward, but I don't think we want to go to five. And I don't really see a reason to keep that one. Don't have any synergy with instants and sorceries being in our graveyard. So we just want to draw some creatures here. That's a good one. Don't think we want to use Sheev and Fire on it, though. Might be wrong, but feels like we want to keep it for an actual threat. Alright, well, now we definitely want to sheave and fire <laughs> for opponent kept a one lander. Could also dub, but it feels like killing the elf is going to work out fine. And if they have a pump spell here, we want to make sure to attack first. Opponent takes it. Suppose we could have done this in the opponent's upkeep. So if they did have the pump spell, the elf would be tapped at least. Yeah, that was probably the play. Alright, so slight missed up here. Should have done this in upkeep. Opponent did find a second green source, but we know they can't play anything since they didn't do anything last turn. And now it's time to do da 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 And next turn we can protect it. Alright, so just discard to hand size, there you go. Well, our draws have been the opposite from the opponents, pretty much. But we might go the distance with this Honor Guard. Alright, opponent did find black mana. Surveyor is gonna find a fourth land. Alright, so we have a game. They're likely to chump the Honor Guard here. Alright. Blessed Light. don't think it's worth it to just push for points of damage here. Probably better off keeping it to get rid of a problem card. And we also get to keep up Adam and Twill in the meantime. The fact that our opponent didn't jump might mean that they have a Vicious Offering, in which case Adam and Twill helps. No, nope, just a Sap Hurt, so they've got plenty of jump blockers now. But they'll have to start chomping since Adamant Will is a lethal here. So, alright, opponent gets to play magic. And we have to... Well, that's not a bad one. And we have to just try and apply as much pressure as possible to force them into a corner. The only card they could have to interact would be Fungal Infection to shrink the bodyguard if we go for the kill with Adamant Will. So, do we go for it or do we just play a Partic Wanderer? Feels like just playing Partic Wanderer is safer than going for the kill, since if they do have the Fungal Infection then we're... Alright, they're gonna cast it anyway. Fair enough. That's not gonna work out, since we get to kill three of them, or two guys with first strike and then they don't have enough to actually kill the Honor Guard. So maybe a slight miscalculation from the opponent's part. They should have just jump blocked with one creature. And now opponent's gonna scoop it up. Alright, so against black-green 
kind of mid-range saplings. Well, my guess is a radiating lightning could be okay. That's the only card that stands out. And a Knight of New Banalia might be a little worse after seeing Fungal Infection as well. And the other One Toughness creatures in particular doesn't look like it. Alright, so just a minor modification here. Could bring in an extra 2-drop. Like uh, Kelden Warcaller, maybe cut something else. But I think I'm happy with this setup. Alright, this sand seems fine. Do need some lands, of course, but got some of our more important cards in hand. Seems fine to run this out. Turn to Unicorn goes a long way. Phone in mind of a fungal infection here is my guess. Deathbloom Talon's a good one. Alright, so we could go for a dub. Don't hate it. The alternative's not very good. And if the card they had was Fungal Infection, then this is pretty safe. If it's a Vicious Offering, then could get punished. Cast down. It's even worse. But I guess I was going to kill Orsara Angel eventually, so... Now we at least know about the cast down. Alright, so... Could Radiating Lightning to kill the Elf. Put them off of double green. Or we could Kelder Raider discarding Sergeant to dig towards double white. My guess is Radiating Lightning is a decent play here. Gets rid of a creature and potentially cuts them off double green. Could have also waited until end of turn. Maybe they play another one of this creature. But then let's say they just play a Pardic Wonder or like the 5-5 five -five Death Touch guy using the Elf. We're going to be pretty far behind on board, so... Definitely arguments for both. Haven't seen a ton of the opponent's deck yet, so we can't really make a super informed decision there. That was a good draw. I think we're just going for it here, hoping they don't have another removal spell. If they attack with both, then we know they have a Fungal Infection. Alright, so they have a Fungal Infection. I think we're fine taking six, and then we can use our other creatures to trade off. Oof, Slimefoot, that's a good one. Wish we still had our Radiant Lightning in hand now. Alright, so we're going to want to keep the Sergeant for Kickers, my guess. If we draw 6 land, we're going to use Candle on Slimefoots, probably. Um, so playing Cyclops here seems reasonable. Oh, what happened? We just skipped through our second main. Ah, oh, god, the bug again. Well, we were supposed to have a Cyclops in play right now. That's a tilt. Well, I guess we're both not attacking. <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's make sure to do this properly. One attacker. Do they have Arbor Armament of all things? So that explains there are no attacks. And of course we... And a Fungal Infection to boot. Sure. Well, there goes our win condition. I guess we want to probably discard the Cyclops now with the Kelden Raider instead. Alright, well. Blessed Light answers Slime Food at least, so I guess we're somewhat stable. Would have been nice to have a Cyclops in play now, since then we could have double blocked the Confessor at least.
Alright, so Slimefoot has to go, that's clear. And I guess we might as well use a candle. Could also play Kicked Sergeant first. Is that better than using a candle right now? Don't think so. So we'll make sure to get rid of Slimefoot. And then just hang back with the Raider. We'll take three from Confessor and then next turn we can play Kicked Sergeant to stabilize. So we're potentially gonna be at one, uh, two life here if they attack with everyone. All right. Kicked Sergeant still seems like the play here. Could keep land in hand to play around Skin Witch. But her opponents won't land away from it. Suppose they could go land and... Suppose they could be holding Skin Witch and then... Go land and kick Skin Witch. What's the upside of playing the land? If we draw lands next turn, that doesn't really change anything. 7 opposed to 8 lands in play. So I guess we might as well keep the land in hand. And are we attacking with the Galar Raider? Don't think so. So just kick Sergeant. Usually the bug disappears when a, a new game starts, at least in my experience. All right, so Surveyor's fine. Can put Raider in front of Gorger, double block Confessor. All right. Is there a reason to triple block if they have fungal infection, I suppose. Yeah, this makes sense to me. They could, of course, fungal infection a Calden Raider as well. But throwing away a 1-1 one -one if they don't have it seems bad. At least here it's kind of a free additional blocker. Unless they prefer killing two tokens over a sergeant, which I don't think is the case. So that worked out. And now the Cyclops should be an okay stabilizing play. And I'm still gonna keep the lands in hand, I think. Even though now we could be in a spot where if we don't play the land, we could get punished if we draw something we want to play next turn. For instance, a 3-drop. But the possibility of Skin Witch is real, especially now that our opponent got the 6 land with Surveyor. So I'm just gonna pass it back. Our lands didn't really tap optimally here, but probably doesn't matter too much. And yep, there's a Skin Witch. So, at least our decision mattered here. So the board is stable. I've got a Blessed Light to answer a creature. So I don't hate our chances, but we are at 4, they're at 10. Could have been avoided if it wasn't for the bug. I guess her opponent also missed on an attack with a Death Bomb Salad, but don't think that was a bug. I think they just forgot. Well, that's uh, quite a few lands now. But now we might as well play out a land. Since if they skin with us, we just respond with Blessed Light. Reason to hold it if, is if we were to draw more lands and then they play a second skin witch. I guess I'm okay with that outcome. Do have to start drawing our flyers here. Spider's a big one. Probably have to just blessed light that right now. Since it also stops our win conditions. And I can't really imagine our opponent playing many creatures bigger than the spider. Could wait to let our opponent attack with everyone to get some favorable blocks with a Cyclops. But if we draw a flyer next turn, we want to be able to play it, I think. Alright. 
Well, let's select the fourth land in a row now. I guess now I'll keep it to represent something. We're halfway through our deck. Sarah Angel's gone, but we still have double Tiana. We also have a few planes, I suppose. Opponent also not doing much, at least. Well, there we go. And now we wish we still had a, a Blessed Light. <laughs> so... We're forced to chump block run. So we need to draw probably another sergeant at arms in the meantime, and then a flyer that can start attacking. Should still have a sergeant in our deck. And Crows and Druid getting the opponent 10. It's gonna make it real difficult to win this type of race. Alright, so we're pretty dead here. Don't think we can realistically win this game. So we got to see more of the opponent's deck. Their deck seems pretty good here. Only questionable card, Arbor Armament. So we got lucky to steal the first game. Definitely could have been in a different spot had we drawn one of our flyers by now. Or if they didn't have the cast down early for the unicorn. Shields not gonna prevent enough damage, I'm afraid. Do we even show them the shield? I guess we do. But I don't I don't think we want to show them the adamant will. Even if that means losing a, uh, an extra creature and potentially buying ourselves an extra turn. I think the value of hiding the adamant wills probably worth it since I don't think we showed it to them in the first game. Uh, Arbor Armament is just a, th a little bit too low impact of an effect for one card. And yep, yeah, now we're dead. All right. So I don't think the bug ended up mattering in this game. Although it kind of snowballed the fact that we didn't have Cyclops in play. We took quite a bit of damage that we shouldn't have. So we could consider Urza Stone since the game seemed kind of grindy. Don't hate it. And then what do we take out? Lightning seemed great, maybe we pull the trigger a little early. Could see cutting a random 2-drop. Or maybe a Warlord's Fury. Is shield any good? Shield also doesn't seem great since they mostly have 1-1s one and then giant creatures. So shield doesn't actually line up very well. Let's cut the shield. Alright, so we're 1-1 one one in this match, and we're 2-0 and oh overall. Hopefully the bug is gone now. Well, the sand's not great, but if we find red mana, it's okay. think we risk it. Don't really want to go to six. Hey, thanks for the 100 bits there, bearded cats. Opponent's got their best turn one play. No red mana for us yet. Alright. Opponents uh, ramping pretty hard, hopefully they don't ramp into anything too scary. We're happy to draw lands, but a uh, mountain would go a long way here. I 
Yep, that's a good curve. I swear I put those mountains somewhere in our deck. Yep. Yeah, the opponent's deck looks very good, so I'm not surprised that we're behind here. I mean, apart from the color screw and all. Do we have to blessed light a salad here? It's probably better actually. And then kicked sergeant, hopefully next turn. Probably beats playing a sergeant. All right, there's a red mana finally. So this is gonna help stabilize. Spawn could have a fungal infection, cast down, arbor armament. Have to keep all of those in mind. So double block on the salad doesn't work if they have a cast down. A single block with a sergeant doesn't work if they have a fungal infection. And no attacks, wow. Alright then. Well. They also didn't play a skin witch. I imagine if they had a skin witch they would have played it there. We had three cards in hand. So I'm not going to play around skin witch this turn cycle at least. So my guess is just playing goblins fine. And is there a real reason to play out the planes? Not really. Since we can still activate candle plus play a one drop if we want to. So I think we'll just say go. So if they do top deck a skin witch then can at least keep our Shivan fire. Alright, so hopefully they're just flooding out here. We are as well. Now I guess I'll play the planes. I guess we'll cycle the fury actually. Since we would like to draw some action. Sarah Angel high up our, high up on our list. And, and no attacks for now. Well, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that the game stalled out like this. Since the opponent arguably has a better late game. They might be holding on to a removal spell, like a cast down, who knows. They could also have a creature that they don't want to play into the candle, that's definitely possible too. Alright, let's pass it back. So, need to find a flyer here. And there's a Grun with Kicker. So, that's a Tantan. -tan. So, even Candle plus Sheevan Fire doesn't do it. Alright then. And we had to use our Blessed Light defensively early so we wouldn't die. That's too bad. So we're gonna die to Grun, bashing our face in. And of course now Grun is going to start attacking, so we can't set up the scenario where we attack into it, they block and then we Sheevan Fire plus Candle. And even if we Candle it after it attacks, it would still attack as a Tenten, so no hope of uh, killing it in combat. Alright, so we're just uh, going to have to chomp it and then hope to find a Flyer to race somehow. It's going to be a stretch. Yeah, 
wish we didn't have to use a blasted light earlier. But here we are. And our board is gonna start falling apart pretty soon and still can't really make any great attacks, even if we wanted to. Yeah, I don't think we have any outs to this kind of scenario, especially with our opponent still at 20. Don't know if I'm forgetting anything, Dub's not gonna do it. I guess Dub kind of gives us a hope of being able to outrace our opponent, but they're holding four cards, so they're likely holding some removal as well. So we either enchant the Goblin or the Sergeant. My guess is Goblin, since the Kicker could come in handy. But there's quite a difference between 4 and 20. Uh, Kick Shaven and Fire and Candle is only 9 damage, or, well, 9 total. So still not enough to deal with Grun. And once it attacks and we try to block, it's 20. And of course Grun's never gonna stay back to block. Alright, I mean, this game just decided by a kick grunt, sadly. Not the most interesting game. A normal grunt we could have dealt with. Kate grunt, a bit too difficult. So there's a chance we should not have played our candle, since our opponent saw the candle, they had a grunt in hand, they didn't want to play it unkicked, so they waited until they could kick it. So maybe we got punished because of that. But there's also the skin witch argument that you want to get the candle in play. The mana efficiency could matter. But that was a decision, nonetheless. Just goes to show how many decisions can get involved. Ancient Animus. Is there anything we can do about that? They also get a plus one plus one counter just for the Rubbins. So yeah, Candle and Shivan Fire are still not close enough. All right, it's too bad. I mean, if we drew like uh, Sarah Angel a turn or two ago and they didn't have an answer to it, but I guess they had an Ancient Animus. So I guess if we draw a flyer right now, followed by like a kicked Sergeant at Arms, we might still have a chance. But that's about it. And they're likely to just have a bunch of answers in hand now. Now maybe even an Arbor Armament. Although that would be beatable with our removal spells. Mammoth Spider. So if we were to Sheevan Fire with Kicker, they likely have a... I guess that's only 4 damage, so never mind. But they likely have an Arbor Armament if we go for the Candle. So there's Tiana. So we... Attacking with the Wanderer here. I mean... We might as well and just jump with Tiana. Don't think it makes a huge difference either way. So Tiana doesn't die to cast down at least. And Candle can take out Spider potentially. 
Might as well wait if they have an Arbor Armament, since then the minus power still applies. Alright, opponent attacks with everyone. Uh, if we still had Shivan Fire and Candle up, then we could have maybe actually killed Grun. So we have to chomp and then use Candle to take out Spider. And there's Arbor Armament in response to save the Spider. Yep. And I don't think we can deal five additional damage out of nowhere here. Well, we still made a game out of it, I suppose. Got our opponent to five. Maybe. No, they had a cast down too. Yeah, so they just had everything. Eh, GG's. No settled wreckage to bluff in the set. Alright, so... Painful loss to Kicked Grun here. Not much we could have done about it. And this hand seems fine. A little awkward with a 5 and a 6 drop, but get to play some 2 drops in the meantime. Planes into Tragic Poets. Alright, I'm intrigued. Black White Enchantments. Don't know if it really matters which 2-drop we lead with here. The attacking Tragic Poets was short-lived. Alright, if we can hit our fifth land drop here, we'll be in an okay spot. Alright, I see points on Mardu. Going pretty deep. And the main phase Dark Bargain. Not sure why. Since they already played a land for the turn, so they might as well just play it at instant speed. No counter spells in red white. Alright, we found our lands. Not a very exciting turn at this turn, but got some good plays lined up. Poet gets in there. Yeah, if we were able to play a 4-drop here, this game would almost be over. But uh, since we didn't, opponent gets a chance to catch back up. Unkicked Skinwitch, alright. So very defensive turn from the opponent, which is good. Could attack with both, don't know if that accomplishes much. I guess that's okay. We're fine trading. Given that we're gonna play Tiana, the Banal Honor Guard's gonna become a 3-2. So we'd actually just prefer to trade the Goblin for the Honor Guard if possible. But they likely to just block with the Skin Witch anyway, but they might play again around like a radiating lightning, dealing one damage to everything. And wow, they actually decide to take it. Alright. So now we've got a 3-2 Honor Guard. Which can attack into the Skin Witch. Probably have a removal spell for her. Eviscerate's a good one. So land lets us play Wanderer. Opponent offering the trade now. Didn't think we have to accept since now we can just attack with both and then play Adamant Will potentially. And if they double block one of them, I guess that's okay. If our opponent include a Tragic Poet in their deck, it might be good. So getting rid of it seems fine. Instead, just a chum block, even better. Yeah, the uh, 
poet only gets back enchantments, not all historic cards, since it's a reprint. All right. So this turn's going to be pretty spicy. So time to smash with everyone. Blasted Light and Adamant will at the ready. And this looks like a okay target for Adamant Will, although it's not all that exciting to use Adamant Will here since we wouldn't actually kill the Skin Witch, so it seems fine to let this trade happen. And then we could save the other Honor Guard, but I think we're okay just holding on to the Adamant Will, protect our Wander from a potential removal spell, and then just play a Knight of New Banalia here. Arvad, alright, that's the target for Blessed Light. Could consider the Urza Stone if it's gonna come to a grindy game. Could see cutting a Warlord's Fury just kind of as our default cut. Don't think anything was especially bad. Could consider cutting Dub. Could consider cutting the Shield. Uh, shield might be kind of bad actually. Alright, we'll try this. Uh, the sand seems okay. Yeah, if you're looking for a deck with interaction, then the uh, Eldrazi Taxes deck and Mardu Pyromancer should fit the bill. Well, that's a rare sighting of Wizard's Lining. I don't know if we've drawn this card before. Uh, I think we cycle just to try and find a two-drop creature. Alright, so is it time for Unkicked Sergeants? I think so. On Sarah's Wings. Well, opponent's gonna have a bad day. So we could Goblin Barrage, we could Wizard's Lining. Um, what's better? Keeping the instant speed Wizard Lining seems fine. Don't know how relevant the extra toughness is going to be. We saw Arvad from our opponent, which dies to the Lightning just fine. think we Barrage here. Alright, Cyclops down, that's okay. As long as we don't have to play the dub, we can just play out some creatures, I think that's better. Opponent could get back on Sarah's Wings with their Poets. I don't think we mind, given all the removal we have available. So we can just run out Tiana. And we pretty much have all the removal spells in our deck in hand currently.
All right, so Lyra would normally be an issue if it weren't for this blasted light. And I think we're okay to... Hmm, do we keep the land in hand or do we play it out? Having access to instant speed, even fire could be nice. But... There's also... The skin which that we should consider, so I guess we'll keep the land in hand for now. Alright. Gets back a 2-drop. Not the most exciting play on their part. Alright, so is it time to dub? Nah, I don't think so. I think we're fine playing a Surveyor, getting a land. Although I guess if they double block then we're forced to Sheevan fire. So maybe dub is actually fine. The issue is their opponent can Sack Poet get back on Sarah's wings. So I guess they're not likely to double block. Or we can just dub and then keep up Sheevan fire. It might be the best of both worlds instead of playing the Surveyor here. And we also have Tiana in place, so a bit of synergy with the enchantment there. So we'll say go. Keep up Shivan Fire, and then a lightning could also go to the face. So Poet gets back wings. And that should wrap things up. Alright. Got to punish the aura deck. Feels good. Alright, so we got to our three match wins as we were hoping for, so it can't be too sad if we lose the next one here. This hand seems pretty nice. Unicorn plus dub could run away with the game. Alright, that's a good follow-up. So they're kind of forcing the issue on this dub. Opponent's staying back with the knight. Not entirely sure why. But I'll take it. Thought Omnivore, sure. Now our opponent could potentially triple block. Oh, I think I messed up. Yeah, I should have actually played Tiana pre-combat. So we would have gotten our aura back. Does that change our play? Since I kind of wanted to represent a trick, so they would be less likely to triple block. But if we had just played Tiana before attacking, then if they did go for the triple block, we still get our aura back. I guess attacking with Cyclops doesn't make a ton of sense. Alright, so we'll just attack with the Unicorn. So, could come back to bite us here if they triple block. But it is definitely risky for them in the face of 5 open mana. This one's not gonna work out. Uh, so do we want to kill Omnivore or Knight? I guess we kill Omnivore. Yeah, some of our opponents tonight don't seem to fully realize how uh, First Strike interacts. 
So it didn't get punished there. Alright, so now attacking with the unicorn is pretty safe with Tiana. And then we can see if we want to play Kalner Raider. Uh, so what do we want to kill here? Probably the Knight and a Deathbloom. And then, do we discard anything? I don't think so. Alright. Zero points at nine. Tiana's a three turn clock. And got a decent board presence. Think just Tiana getting into here. Could also attack with the Cyclops, but then they double block. We'll see what happens. Alright, that worked. Could play a sergeant without kicker. Kind of seems like a waste here. I think we're just going to blast it light end of turn and then attack with everyone. Alright, settle the score. That's settled then. So we can blast it light the Thalad. Somewhat aggressive here, but I want to force my opponent to chum block it if uh, possible. Alright, so if they want to double block Kelden Raider, they take 4 down to 2. And we get to add a party Wanderer to the board, so that's fine. So now we have two lethal threats they have to deal with. Well, our uh, unicorn definitely ran away with the game. Alright, so against the blue-black kind of mid-range, Settle the score was the only interaction we saw. A bunch of Thalad synergy, potentially. Um, don't think we want Radiating Lightning, even though it can clean up some of the 1-1s. One I think we're fine with our setup. Could consider Urza's Tome if the game comes to a stall. Not the worst idea. So just plus one Tome, minus one Fury. And this one I don't think we want to keep. This one seems pretty decent. And I'll keep a line on top. Turn to Unicorn. Thalad's somewhat annoying here. Don't think we want to trade here. We'll just chill. Alright, that's an aggressive attack. Attack with both if they block Adamant Will, if not, play Cyclops. Seems fine to me. So probably blocking the Sergeants would be my guess if they block anything. No blocks, also works for me. Cyclops blocks Thalid, and then we'll take some damage from the Confessor, but that's okay. 
I want to keep the barrage for potential flyers. Maybe the omnivore. Although they would have one mana up. So that's going to be tricky. Yep. So they can sack the death bloom to the omnivore to have it survive. So let's just play Tiana. And then maybe next turn we can double spell to greater effect. That's a nice divest you've got there. I like our hand. I guess now that they know about Adamant Will, it's less effective. And Divination to make up for the card disadvantage. Fair enough. So that was a, a 4 mana peak. Alright, so Omnivore attacking can be up to a 5-5. Five five. So we could easily just double block it. Seems fine. So they get to kill Cyclops if they pump, and if not, they just kill Sergeant. Is that better than blocking with the Unicorn? I guess not really. Don't care too much about the life gain anymore, and we would get to gain two life regardless. And they're likely to still kill the Cyclops, so we gain two life for free. And if they let damage happen, that's fine too. Alright, so they are sacking. Pretty weird attack. Maybe they were panicking since they saw the trick and the removal spell. Alright. So, attack with everyone seems okay. No real need to barrage the Confessor, I don't think. When we can go Adamant Will plus Knight. Could get punished by Skin Witch here, but the other option was playing Barrage on the Confessor. Yep, that's eh, too bad. So in hindsight, maybe Barrage on Confessor would have worked out better. Well. That's not a bad draw. So what's our play here? Attack with everyone, opponent blocks a two power creature, trades for a knight, takes five, lightning puts them to one, technically. Yeah, I think we just send everyone here. Keep the lightning as kind of a surprise. So what would have happened had we used barrage on Confessor? They would have made us discard Knight and the Adamant Will. So we would have had minus one Knight in play and the opponent minus one Confessor. But since the Confessor attacked, it's actually favoring us right now, I think. But next turn, that might change. Acolytes, kind of annoying. So we'll see if they attack us here. I want them to feel safe so we can attack with everyone and then potentially burn them out. There's a chance we should Wizard's Lining right now. Just to be mana efficient so we can potentially play what we draw next turn. Unlike we just did. But uh, the Tiana has a good attack in the Acolyte anyway. And the other ones... Can't really attack regardless, so this seems acceptable. And then we get to add a Cyclops to the board. And then hopefully they don't have any more discard. Mm -hmm. 
they might activate the memorial, but they still have three cards in hand, so... Alright, another Acolyte. Yeah, if they now double block, we have two removal spells to punish them. Is it time to attack with everyone? So what happens if we attack with everyone and our opponent, let's say, doesn't have anything? They could double block Tiana. Then block our two power creatures, take four, die to the lightning. Or they could double block the Cyclops. Yeah, I think we'll send everyone here. Be aggressive. Hope they don't have interaction. Opponent snaps off the double block. Alright, I guess this makes him survive. But now we can Wizard Slining or Blasted Light and Acolyte. And they lose a Skin Witch. Suppose that's reasonable. And we want to keep the Burn Spell, I think. Yeah, let's find out. So we both lose a creature with those blocks, but we got two damage across. So our opponent is facing three creatures at five life with a wizard lining in hand. Don't hate our spots, but anything could happen. That's fine. Alright, so now they're just dead. And for single blue they can't have anything. Alright, sweet. Got there. So that puts us to 4 and 1. So one more match to play here. MVC. Um, probably Tiana. Alright, so got more wins than we expected with the deck. That's good. And one last match for all the marbles. We're on the draw. Let's hope for a good one. And not quite, but with some red mana this hand could be okay. We're on the draw. Don't really want to go to six when we have lands and spells. Black green, right on time. So next turn we could go shield equip. Somewhat awkward to attack now, since we're not really out racing a 3-2. So we might just want to leave the goblin back actually. Use it as a blocker if they kill it, so be it. If we had a 4-drop we could play here, I would probably make a different choice here, but I don't think we want to be racing with the sand. Alright, Soothsayer probably has to die at some point. Double Tiana, let's hope to hit our land drops. Alright, so Soothsayer makes a removal pretty awkward, since if they just keep up 2 mana they can get value. So my guess is that's worthy of a wizard's lining. Still gonna hang back with our goblin. At least for now. Opponent on Junt, alright. Splashing for maybe red removal, maybe Garna. Phoenix is not what I would have guessed. So maybe they're just all over the place, or they're splashing... Nah, I guess they're just all over the place. Well, we drew all the five drops in our deck. That's unfortunate. Still don't think we want to be attacking here. But if we draw any land now, we're in business. So let's try and draw land. Yep, that's a scary one. But we can block an adamant will it. And it's unlikely that they have interaction, because they could have a pump spell, but we would still not lose a goblin, so it would be a one for one. Yep, 
And we just want to make use of our mana here so we don't fall too far behind. All right, that worked. And land perfect. I think we lead with Tiana. They might be sandbagging removal. Still don't think I attack with the goblin. We want to wait and see if Tiana survives. Let's get in there with Tiana. Could also attack with the goblin now, I suppose. That's pretty aggressive if they kill the angel, though. I think we'll just attack with Tiana for now. Be a little bit cautious. And we'll keep the land in hand in case of skin witch. Alright, no cast down. At least so far. Bones got 8 mana. And they're eyeing up our Sarah Angel. Alright. So far so good. If they block Sarah Angel, we'll have to be careful. Then we might have to Blessed Light the Phoenix. Alright, they just have a Kick Chieven Fire. Interesting they let us untap there, since it could have had a Another adamant will, but we don't. So my guess is they drew the Sheevan Fire this turn, otherwise they probably would have killed Tiana by now. So it works out poorly for us since we have a second Tiana, but so be it. Play on our guard. Suppose we could have probably attacked with the Goblin this turn since we could go on our guard, move the shield. Move the shield now. Say go. We're still doing okay here. Depending on what their last card is. Phoenix gets in for two. Alright, so now we definitely want to start being more aggressive on the ground. Ooh, kicked Varix Blade Wing. Yep, that's a pretty good one. So what's our play? The shield can protect Tiana in the air. And then we can Blessed Light the other one. Let's see how aggressive they get. They could attack with both dragons and can't really punish them for it. Alright, they're not attacking, but we're still going to get rid of Varix here. Can't really make any attacks with Tiana. So yeah, we're going to need to find an answer to this uh, dragon token. Since we don't have any good attacks at the moment. Huh, I guess I didn't consider the ability on the goblin. Does that do anything for us? I mean, if we attack with a goblin, our opponent can just double block dragon and scout unless we move the shield. Then, uh... I guess they wouldn't be able to kill it unless they block Envoy plus Bladewing. But then we trade for an Envoy. I guess that's reasonable. Bun just takes it. So we'll take four from the dragon, but can block the phoenix and the other ground creatures, so not too bad. So, opponent so far just splashing for a soothsayer. No attacks. Alright, works for me. But we still don't really have any attacks on the way back. So this is just Drago until we find an answer for the 4-4. 
and we'll start sandbagging lands in case of skin witch. So this is a weird stalemate. If they kill Tiana, we've got a replacement, so don't feel too bad about our spot here. Warlord's Fury, does that do much? Could let our other ground creatures attack, potentially. Although those attacks don't actually look all that amazing. They can put a 1-3 in front of a 1-1 one, one or a 2-3. The 4-4 four, four can block the 3-2, but I guess we still cycle this. In the hopes of finding a removal spell for the Bladewing token. No such luck. Might as well thin out our deck. But then I don't think we're making any attacks here. Even if we move the shield, I don't think we really get anywhere. So let's just say go, keep double land in hand in case of skin witch. So we've got a goblin barrage, which would be pretty decent. And what else? Don't have much removal left. All right, so stalemate continues. Yeah, Ferrix Blade Wing, a uh, hell of a card. Another kick sergeant, so we can attempt to make the same play like we did a couple turns ago. And they likely will block the goblin this time around, since otherwise they risk losing to an alpha strike next turn. They might also be holding a removal spell, who knows. Alright, we're gonna see the token jump in front now. And what else is gonna be sacrificed? Well, I guess that's fine. Kill an envoy anyway. Seems like a good trade for us. And move the shield again. Alright, so... Got to make an extra sergeant at arms. So now we've got quite a few tokens for if we want to go wide. But at 11, don't think we can start going for all-out attacks yet. Goblin Barrage probably wins us a game on the spot, since we can sacrifice an artifact too. Get rid of the 4-4 token, and deal 4 to our opponent. Wow, Impulse just finding a land there. So either they just found lands or maybe some removal spells they couldn't take. So, so far the black is just for a Soothsayer. They must have something else in there. Aha, dub. Well, dub is not bad. So do we dub Tiana herself or one of our other creatures? I suppose one of our other creatures given Tiana's ability. So we can move the shield onto the other guard and then dub the other guard. Yeah, they could have Josu, they could have Bells Unlock, they could have Garna, they could have Daragaz. Too many to name. Let's see if they have a response. They don't. And yeah, this honor guard's gonna be quite effective. So just a chum block for now. Alright. Next turn we'll probably just attack again with the honor guard, but then we might start attacking with everyone, we'll see. Don't really want to give them the time to top deck into their splash cards. But so far they seem to be flooding out quite a bit. Definitely more than us. Alright, so let's do the same. Force them to jump again. And then I think next turn we'll go for the all-out attack. Alright, they take it. That makes the all-out attack even more appealing. Yeah, the shield's been decent so far. But I think any equipment would have been good here, to be honest.
Yeah, I think a lance would have probably been better than a shield. How does Sunt Everyone look like? Yeah, let's just find out. Make them figure it out. Can be too horrible. Alright, opponent survived. And our board states looks pretty decent still. And not impossible that we die on the way back, but it would take something like a Darigas. Six. I guess Darigas would still be a point short. It's gotta be Darigas plus something else. Alright, let's send. Alright, so against Junt, don't know what their splash card is. How do we sideboard? They had quite a bit of ramp in there as well. Um, they didn't have too much one toughness stuff, just Lanor Elves, maybe Marwyn. Don't think we need this. Uh, maybe Urza's Tomb instead of our Fury again. Matchup seems quite grindy. Haven't drawn our Urza's Tomb yet, so kind of want to see how it performs. Yeah, this seems okay. Don't want to overthink it. This hand seems fine. Any third land lets us find red mana. Of course, Mountain would be the preferred draw. Alright, opponent leads with red green mana. Those are their base colors. Don't think we're dubbing next turn, but we'll see. Yep, I think we're fine with the trade here, actually. And then we'll play a goblin. The reason I don't want to dub this early is that it's usually better to develop your creatures first and then use dub in a turn where it makes you able to attack past a blocker you otherwise couldn't. And I guess it's true that here we would have been able to attack without trading, but it's even better if you get past a blocker that would normally eat your creature otherwise. Like if they played a 4-4, four, four, for example. One keeps up 4 mana. I'm not sure what to make of it, but we're just gonna attack and then play a goblin. Got uh, all our removal spells in hand again. So we want to avoid trading off creatures now, actually. But it's going to be difficult given the low toughness. Kick grow, alright. So next turn's going to be scary. Alright, so I think we just send the two drops and then play Kelden Raider. And don't even know if we want to discard anything here. Since we kind of want land for Blessed Lights, dub could be very useful and discarding removal seems kind of weird. So I don't think we discard anything. So we haven't seen any skin witches from the opponents last uh, game and the game went pretty long. And seems weird to splash a skin witch, although it's not impossible. I think we still play out our land here. 
in case we need to like go wizard lining plus dub next turn we can use six mana in play Ooh, what is this there gas so yep But actually, six, seven. Yeah, there's still that since we can kick Goblin Barrage to deal four to them. And we can even choose. We can kick Barrage, sacking Surveyor, which will trigger the Bloodstone Goblin, or we can attack first and then do it afterwards. Adds up to the same. All right, sweet. can even choose which one to sacrifice. All right, GG's. So in the end, we got uh, the five match wins. So definitely outperformed our expectations here. So yeah, it just goes to show. OK curve, a little bit of removal, and you don't really need much more to win matches. Let's claim our prizes. It's a lot of packs. Let's crank those packs. Naban's a nice one. I think I would still take the lightning over it. Man, this pack is pretty stacked. Blessed Light, Journey Mage, Elves. And probably would go with Atlas here. Her approach is also reasonable. And I think I'll take cast down over a uh, Lenor Elves unless I'm in the mood for some ramp. And here I would go with Seal Away over Quende. And I think Sarah Angel's a pretty easy pick here. And last pack. And this one's tricky. Probably just a fire intervention. Not a fan of these legendary sorceries. At least not early in the draft. And I think I prefer intervention over Garna. Keeps their options open. Probably better than cavalry. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel. And you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.